Hi, I'm Christine Herman of Herman's Quality Meat Shop in Newark, Delaware. Welcome to my YouTube channel. We are going to be talking about, in this video, the top round. Are you ready? This is one big piece of meat. This is the, what we call the top round of beef. And this is the largest muscle in the steer's thigh. And I am going to trim it up and make it into a beautiful roast. And this particular piece of meat is extremely versatile. Extremely versatile. It is extremely lean also. I'm gonna flip it around. It doesn't look very pretty right now. But there's actually a seam right here, and I'm going to take what we call the cap off. And I'm going to clean that up a little bit more right there. This particular cut of meat is used for oven roasts. We actually use it when we cook our roast beef for lunch meat. It is excellent, quite delicious, very tender, cooks up nicely makes a delicious dinner if you want to entertain and make roast beef and mashed potatoes a sunday dinner or a holiday meal excuse me quite um, a nice presentation as well you get nice full slices when you cook it and it also serves very nicely as a london broil I'm sure you've probably heard London broil before. You've also heard the term um, pepper steak, cube steaks. We use it for cube steaks or tenderizing, Swiss steaks, the recipe. And one of my favorites that we use it for in this store is chip steak. So for cheesesteak sandwiches, as they say. Excellent, absolutely excellent. Slice it thin and it cooks up very nicely and it is lean. Check this out. I'm going to kind of roll it. And what I'm doing is I'm seaming out this cap and taking this off because I have to trim up and get rid of the, the fat and some of the unwanted uh, muscle portions here. And it's like bigger than me at this moment. Um, so, and how many of you make a form of, I'm going to use the term roll-ups or brujol or beef roladen, and those are recipes, but this is also an excellent cut of meat for that recipe as well. And the reason being, once again, is because you get a really nice full slice out of each piece and it makes it excellent for stuffing and rolling and so many people in our store customers come in our store ask for this and I have asked them their different recipes because my mom makes uh, beef roll-ups or in our family we call them brujol and she stuffs them with um, mushrooms and seasonings, Italian seasonings, and other people have other types of recipes that they use. So I like to hear about different recipes. But that is uh, what this particular piece of meat is ideal for as well. We sell here in our store a lot of sliced roast beef for sandwiches, hot and cold roast beef sandwiches. And this is the cut of meat that I like to use most often and you can see and I'm just trimming this up really nicely there's a vein here that I want to make sure that I kind of tunnel out because you don't want to be eating that a little bit of tidbit of information about our store is we've been in business since 1967. Our store was originally owned by my mother and father-in-law, mother and father-in-law, Lutheran Jeanette Herman. 
they bought the business from Mr. and Mrs. McMullen back in 1967 when we were at a different location. We were actually on Main Street. The McMullen store was on Main Street for many years. And before it was the McMullen store, it was actually the Steele family. So Newark has had a fresh meat market for probably well over 125 years, going back a long time to when meat was transferred via house to house in like an ice box type of back of a truck with ice in the back of the truck. And they would go door to door and knock and see who wanted meat. So a little bit of information there, kind of fun tidbits to know and learn. When you cook, let's go back to the roast, when you cook this top round, you want to put it on an open rack, which we'll get to in just a few minutes. I'm almost done cleaning it up, you see. Season it with your favorite seasonings. It could be something simple as salt and pepper. If you want to infuse some garlic, you can poke little holes and put some garlic cloves in if you want. You could do Italian seasonings with that, parsley, oregano. If you have a dry rub you like, go for it. We also offer a service where if you buy a roast like this and prefer to cook it yourself, which as I said, we cook these roasts all the time and slice them for customers and slice them for sandwiches. There you go. There's your roast, basically. You see how beautiful that is? One more little speck here I want to make sure I remove. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it. But, oh, going back to the service that we like to offer our customers is buy it from us, cook it your way, you can bring it back, and we'll, we'll be happy to slice it for you. Or slice it for dinner however you want, and then bring us back what's left, and then we'll slice it for you for sandwiches. So that is something that we offer here as a service to our customers. Couple ties, draws in the meat, makes it easier to cook and manage. My string wants to cooperate. Another <clears throat> good use for this particular piece of meat because it's so lean and large is what we call London broil. And that is actually a recipe. London broil, the original London broil recipe was a flank steak. However, this is ideal for that. Nice piece of meat that we can cut thick. You can marinate and put on the grill. Cut it into stir fry, pepper steak. There you are. There's your top round. How beautiful that is. We can take this little guy right there and just trim that out. Nice and lean. You can see the marbling right in through here. Still don't like that one little spot right there. A little bit of aging we want to take out of there. Okay, so this particular roast I would not recommend as a pot roast. It is an oven roast. So by an oven roast, I mean you're going to cook it on an open rack with foil. I love the foil. If you want to spray that with cooking spray, that's fine. Set it as such. When you buy a roast like this from us, we're going to put sliced fat on top. But what you're going to do when you get it home is you're going to take it off. You're going to season the meat, whether it's whatever we just talked about, dry rub or salt and pepper. You're going to cover it. And what this does is a couple things. It keeps the meat from burning on the outside. It all the way around and it keeps it moist and it also helps create some juices. What I like to do from here, preheat my oven to about 500 degrees, put maybe about an inch or so of water in the bottom of the pan, put it in the oven at 500 degrees and bake it for about 15 minutes and then reduce the temperature to 350 
or you can go 325, a little lower and a little longer, and bake it for about, this particular piece of meat you're gonna to wanna to cook for a good two hours, I would say. You want this to be about 145 inside. You want it to be medium. You, in my opinion, this is my opinion, you don't want it to be completely red, although I have a lot of customers that do like it totally rare, but that may be offensive to some of your guests, I don't know. Um, but also, you want it to be somewhat rare in the center. You will have your well done edges for sure, but you want to make sure that it is nice and tender and juicy on the inside. And I've mentioned this before, and I'm trying to explain it again. Your roast is really wide around here and really long. The oven is cooking this way. So the temperature and the cooking is cooking into this center this way, not this way. So um, keep that in mind also when you're, when you're cooking this beautiful roast. After it's done, you're gonna to wanna to take it out of the oven and let it rest. Let it rest for a good 10 to 15 minutes. That keeps the juices inside. Take this fat off and then put it on your cutting board. In the meantime, and while it's resting, you can take the juices that are, have dripped into the bottom of this pan and make your gravy or your au jus with that. Keep the strings on when you cook it. I should mention that they're not gonna burn. But then when you go to cut it, you wanna cut this with the strings, which is against the grain. The grain is running this way. You want to cut it like so. You can cut it thinner, as thin as you want, or as thick as you'd like for dinner slices. That, my friends, is an excellent roast right there presented to you. Um, and again, we, can, we take these pieces and cut portions. Now, this particular piece right here is probably a good 10 pounds, 8 to 10 pounds. You don't have to buy the whole thing at our store. We can cut a portion of this if you're serving. Depending upon how many people you're serving, we figure about three quarters of a pound per person in calculations. But we can cut you a small piece from the end, from the middle. And again, for us as a business, it's a very versatile piece that we use for all of the other things that we've already talked about, from the London broil to the chip steak and so on. So we're constantly working from this particular piece of meat. As a roast, again, delicious, absolutely amazing. So top round of beef from the thigh. I hope that this was a helpful idea for you to try sometime for, for dinner or again, from one of the other recipes that we've talked about. Thank you. All right, my kitchen tip today, we're gonna to be talking about how to prepare and store fresh herbs, mainly how to store them. My two of my favorites are fresh basil. You can see I have a beautiful bunch, and this is not in roots, as you can see. And what I would suggest is treating them like fresh flowers. So you want to cut the tips off carefully and put them in water, whether it's a glass dish or a plastic cup or whatever you have, just like that. And you can store these in the refrigerator or on the countertop. And I've done both, either leaving them like this or covering the top, kind of like so. And I've stored them on my countertop and I've stored them in my refrigerator. So I would kind of cover this a little more like that, helps to keep them. Um, so that's your basil. And parsley, do the same thing. Cooking with fresh herbs is one of my favorites. And I have another little tip. You can use either a nice knife like this, or we're gonna try this pizza roller. Nope, I personally don't care for this, but if you're cutting up vegetables, not vegetables, if you're cutting up I got my other, oh, cutting up the, the leaves themselves, that's what I wanted to say. Cutting up the leaves themselves, you can use the, the pizza roller, kind of like this. 
I personally go with the knife because that's just what I've always done. But that's another part of the tip, is how to actually cut up. So again, we can leave them like that, or we can put a plastic bag over top and keep them stored that way. So there's two fresh herbs. However, maybe you don't use fresh herbs. Maybe you use just dried herbs and other seasonings. If you like to make your own combinations and store them, you can store them in a plastic container, you can store them in a Ziploc bag, you can um, put them in a Tupperware container or reuse another type of um, spice rack, spice container, or something else that I've learned is that if you buy grated cheese, like Parmesan cheese, take the lid off and it'll fit on, this lid in particular will fit on a mason jar. So you've got your larger opening and you have your sprinkle opening, which is fighting me right now. And you can have your sprinkle right there if you wanted to, you know, make your own herbs. I always like to encourage you to make your own seasonings. If you like an Italian seasoning, dry seasonings, you can do your salt and pepper, your parsley, your basil, um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, garlic powder if you'd like. And just always have that handy so that you're always ready to go to season your roast or to season your vegetables with. And why not, right? It's, it's your combination. You don't have to worry about how much salt's in it or you have it already figured out and prepared exactly the way you want it. So there you go. That's my kitchen tip. Thank you. I would strongly encourage you to try a cut of top round, whether it's a roast, whether it's a London broil, or if you want to experiment with um, stir fry or cube steaks, or which is like a tenderized Swiss steak, try it sometime. It's a delicious cut. Again, whether you're serving it as a roast for a holiday meal or just something for a smaller gathering. Enjoy. It's one of my favorites. Thank you. Please remember to like our channel, subscribe, and give us a, a comment or two on how you enjoy your top round roast of uh, beef as well. Because we want to hear from you and we want to keep all of this good information coming your way. Thank you so much. God bless you.